Well, we spent the summer agreeing contracts with a number of key players who could really make us a fighting force in League One this season before they decided they didn't want to be here and sign contracts elsewhere. I hate having no club reputation in FM. Hey guys, and welcome to episode 44 of One Team, One Dream, Into the Woods. My name is James, and on today's episode, I will summarise the summer transfer window with our first season in League One. Plus, we'll have at least one game at home against Fleetwood. Depending on how quickly I manage to get through the transfers, we might have the away game against Doncaster as well. But at the very least, we'll have one match. But just before I get into that, on one of the playoff episodes, it was actually my 100th video on my channel and with that, I thought I'd do something I rarely ever do on one of my episodes, which is at the beginning of the episode, I ask, if you are enjoying the videos, please hit the like button down below. Let me know down in the comments what you like about the videos, what you maybe dislike about the videos, or what do you think I could be doing better. I appreciate those that you are watching the videos and really want to start being able to produce better content for you guys. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to turn your notifications on so you can find out when I release new videos. And it all helps me grow my channel and pushes my videos into the algorithm. Right, so let's get into today's episode. What a summer it has been. As you probably gathered from the intro, it has been extremely frustrating. We have made a couple of key signings, but there should have been far more than there actually was. So let's kick things off by looking at the transfers. So if we go back to the end of last season, because the majority of our transfers took place then. So if we look at June, first player who came in was Connor Masterson. This guy we'd had we'd had signed uh, several months prior. I think I remember mentioning it on an episode. 25-year-old Irish centre-back, three-star current ability, four-and-a-half-star potential ability. Came in as good competition for Tricker and Kirk, both of which were still at the club. And so now we have three decent centre-backs who are going to better fight for those two spots. He came in from Portsmouth for £50,000, one of the very few players we have actually spent money on. Hopefully, he will be worth the fee. Next, we have Curtis Wiltshire, who is an 18-year-old English central midfielder. He can play a little bit all around that central midfield space. One and a half star current ability, four star potential ability. One of those players who definitely was scouted a higher rating before he came into the club. We haven't paid anything for him, though. He came on a free after being a youngster at Chelsea. Next is Matt Graham. Very similar to Wiltshire. 18 year old English central midfielder. Two star current ability. Again, four star potential ability. A little bit better current ability than Wiltshire, but the same the same potential ability both had five stars when we originally scouted them but it does apparently have the potential to be a sky bet league one central midfield in the future and like Wiltshire he came from being an ex-premier league youngster this time at Man City but has gone straight out on loan to Wrexham for the season to hopefully get some football there if we then skip over to this season we have a returning name Ryan Alibiosu the guy who played right back for us last year as he was on loan from Arsenal. I have to say at the start of the summer, I never envisioned me buying this guy, but he was available on a free transfer. We got him for nothing, but he's coming with three-star current ability, four-star potential ability, has played a couple of games uh, in friendlies and weirdly has come back and is actually now a more accomplished winger than he is a right back. And that is where he's going to be playing this season, which gives you a little bit of a hint into what formation we're going to be playing this season. In terms of the outs, it started with Adam McDonnell. Adam McDonnell was one of the first to go. I thought with the number of players we were bringing in midfield, I thought he was going to struggle to get in the squad, especially as I didn't see us playing a defensive midfielder formation this season. So when Saltford came in, offered us 100k, I snapped their, snapped their hands off. So he's gone off to Saltford, but we'll actually be playing them this season, which I didn't notice when we initially sold them to him. So Adam McDonnell may be coming back to Meadow Park at some point. Number of players have left on freeze or loans. The only other key ones would be Ewan Banj. I don't think we ever saw, but he's gone off to Chesterfield for 14.5k. Nicholas McKinnon is now, I think, fourth or fifth in terms of strikers, but I believe still has five star potential, four and a half star potential. So I have sent him off down into the National League to get a season down there, get a season under his belt, and hopefully will allow him to develop. And then we have another, another, a couple of other players who have also gone out on loan. And that was pretty much it. It's been far better for sales than it has for purchases. 
And that is purely because there were three key players who we were looking to sign and we had contracts agreed and then they disappeared elsewhere. Firstly, we had Sammy Robinson, who is was who was going to be our main right back this season. 86 scout rating, two and a half star current ability, four and a half star potential ability. We had a contract agreed with him for about £2,000 a week. This guy was going to come in and be that final piece missing in the squad. And for some reason, decided he was going to disappear off and go to play in Scotland, Scottish League One for £950 a week in our growth. No idea. I can't even explain that one at all. Second one was right, uh, Rafael Garcia. He came in, played a couple of friendlies, played really well. Again, an 84 scout rating, five-star potential this time. We offered him, again, I think he wanted about eight £900. And Exeter from League Two came in and offered him £1,700 a week. If he'd have wanted that, he sh- I would have given him that. However, he didn't ask for that and decided instead to go down to League Two. Again, another one I don't really understand. And then finally, James Olienka. This one really stung. He can play right back and right wing. Three and a half star current ability, five star potential ability, 23 year old Nigerian. We had a contract agree with him fairly early on in the summer and he dragged it out for as long as he could. And eventually he went to Preston again for less money. We had agreed far more money than that for him to come to us. And it does appear that our two star reputation is really punishing us this summer. And I think is going to cause us probably to struggle for recruitment until we can maybe establish ourselves in league with League One. And that was pretty much it. The only other players that we could try and bring in with players either were duplicates what we already had. We did have a really good option for striker come in on a free trial. But again, there's no point bringing him in because we have... I'm going to struggle this season to keep everyone happy striker-wise. And I'll be explaining that in a moment when we look at the team. But if we look at the schedule, friendly-wise... One of the best summers I think I've had in this save so far. We played a number of games, including games against Cardiff, Burnley, Fulham, Everton. I know that the, obviously they're, I know they're not going to put out their first team squads, but in an Everton team against Jordan Pickford, we managed to put five goals past him. And as you can see, Martel Taylor crossed down, Ricky Fagan on the score sheet. Those two played pretty much all the way through the summer while Yeats was on international duty. And that has definitely created a little bit of an issue because with Yeats, we promised that he would get the same match time when he came back from his injury, but he hasn't been here all summer. And Fagan and Yeats have both played really well. So I now have a situation where we have two spots for striker and three strikers who are playing really well. And both all three of them are going to want a lot of time this season. So it's going, that's going to be my biggest challenge is keeping all three of those happy if we look at the league preview the good news continues we are tipped to be 22nd and get relegated in our first uh, first season in league one 101 to win the title i don't think we're going to be anywhere near the top half of the table this season however and this is where the problems come in for striker quite a way up the list on the key players we have ricky fagan who is tipped to be one of the best strikers in league one however both taylor crossdale and yeats are tipped to be uh, League One top scorer. All three of these are not going to be the case, unfortunately. We're going to have to try and see what, how we go with that. But at least we know we're not going to be short of goals. And then the other key player for us is down near the bottom, just above ne- the Newport County players. Alex Kirk is uh, said to be key at centre-back. So without further ado, let's get into first match of the season as we play Fleetwood. And this is the brand new formation we're playing this season. I say brand new, we've played it before, but it's brand new in in recent memory. We are going to be playing a 4-2-4 control possession with a positive mentality. We've played this throughout the preseason and have and have turned over a number of very good performances. And with the lack and obviously with the lack of signings over the summer, it is a very familiar starting 11 so we have Huddart in goal who has really jumped up over the summer now three and a half star current ability uh, goalkeeper so he is definitely any queries I had about him over the summer has definitely gone uh, so he starts in goals for us Divine, Tricker, Kirk and Hosanna are the back four Hosanna jumps in for Alibiosu who as I said has jumped up into the winger role while we try and recruit for a right back Anabai and Andy in central midfield. Andy being another player who has played very well over the preseason and has definitely, for the time being anyway, quashed my uh, feelings towards him about leaving the club. Robson and Alibiosu are the wide men. And to start today, Fagan and Crossdale were up front with Yeats on the bench. It is going to be a tough fight for all three of them to stay in the squad. Poor form from any of them at all, and I will have no hesitation 
in relegating them down to the bench. Here we are, the first ever League One fixture at Meadow Park. One thing, one thing I did notice over the summer as well, we've sold around 2,000 season tickets. So hopefully we'll definitely see higher attendances this season, even if just the season ticket holders turn up. Uh, and with some of the performances over the summer, hopefully we'll be drawing more of a crowd. We are bringing the ball forward here, though, for our first attack of the season. And Adebayi with an awful pass there to Ford. As soon as I started drawing attention to it, we started playing up. And now Finley is in for Fleetwood. And that is so easy. We were building up so well there. And one poor pass. And we got absolutely torn to shreds. That's my own fault. I should have been ignoring the play that was going on and carried on talking. Because as soon as I drew attention to it, we fell apart at the seams. And we're definitely not going to be drawing in more of a crowd if we're playing like that. But we have a highlight almost straight away. Throwing out on the right-hand side. Alabiosu to, to Taylor Crossdale. Now to Andy. To Adebayi. Almost lost the ball, but back to Fagan. To Taylor Crossdale. To Andy. We're getting a little bit stagnant here. We need to try and find a little bit of space. Taylor Crossdale. Nice one-two there. But Taylor Crossdale loses the ball. And this is going to be the story so far in this game, isn't it? Because Fleetwood are now going to come forward again. Hunt on the right-hand side. Can somebody put a tackle in this time? Stop them coming forward. Forward. Back out to Hunt, who's completely, completely outdone his man there. And luckily, the Lavery's shot hits, hits one of our players and goes out for a corner. I think I'm going to agree with my assistant manager. I didn't before the start of the game. I'm going to drop back to a balanced mentality because we're really getting caught on the break. Brilliant tackle there by Elabiosi to put it out for Fleetwood throw in. Fleetwood have a corner on 13 minutes. Whipped into the penalty area. Well cleared by Kirk. Elabiosi is now free. Has lots of space. Now into the penalty area. Three defenders in front of him. But he's now in the penalty area. He takes a shot. He had, I think that's Crossdale in the penalty area. Unfortunately, he went for a shot himself. And it was straight at the goalkeeper. We have a corner with Devine. Whipped into the centre. No one there. And so Fleetwood managed to clear it quite easily. But Andy is first to the ball. Now to Adebayi to Tricker. And that ends the highlight. Fleetwood now have a throw in. Robson manages to clear it though. To Fagan. Brings it down to Taylor Crossdale. This is where these two guys really need to start picking up the pace. Robson is out wide on the overlap. Puts it, tries to put it through to Crossdale. And that was a poor pass. We, I expect better from Robson. Somebody who played as the, as the um, advanced playmaker last season should be a little bit more skilled at passing than that. Hosanna out wide now with Andy. Adebayi, is he going to shoot from range? Unfortunately not. Adebayi is coming off at halftime if he carries on the ways. But that's the second time he's put a poor pass in. And if there's another goal now, luckily I think that's Kirk. Oh no, it's not. It's Devine put in the tackle to block it. But that's two wayward passes from Alibiosu now. He can't be putting in performances like that. We have a number of midfielders who are good enough to be replacing him in this squad. And that's the positive thing in, in certain areas this season. Um, as we get a free kick here on the right-hand side, we've got a number of players in depth, especially in midfield and up front. So any poor performances or any dodgy uh, performances at all and we'll be taking them straight off. And Kirk has drawn us level from a fantastic free kick whipped into the penalty area. Kurtz gets us going to, for the start of the season with goals. Devine with the free kick in centre. Kirk was not even being challenged in the centre. Gets his first of the season. Our first of the season. And makes it Bournewood 1, Fleetwood 1. And we have a corner here. Devine with the corner. Whipped to the centre. Alibiosu. And in a quick double. In the same amount of minutes. From two set pieces. We have had two defenders now. Who have shown the strikers how it's done. And brought us level. Another Devine set piece. And it was divine in many ways. And Alibiosu gets his head on it, puts it into the back of the net, sends us to second in the table, which I'm going to enjoy because it's not going to last very long. And for how up and down that first half has felt, we really are deserving of the 2-1 win. Eight shots on target. Their goalkeeper must be having an absolute blinder with an XG of 1.17. But Fleetwood are not far behind. I'm going to point the finger and say you might be winning, but it could change. Keep, don't let your performance levels drop. How is Adebayi getting on? He's on a 7.0, which is extremely surprising. I am, though, at half time, going to take Fagan off. He's on a 6.6. .6. Bring Yeats on. This is, this is how I'm going to have to be this season to try and keep all three happy, especially when I know that at any time, any, any of the three of them could score and push us even further ahead. 
Right, Fleetwood have a throw in on the uh, right hand side. Adab uh, Adabai makes a brilliant tackle. Hoofs it forward. Yeast's first touch on the ball since this, before pre season. Tries to take a shot from range. Goalkeeper easily clutches it though. That is one thing I'll also have to watch as well is the fact that as much as he's been away on international duty, Yeats has had no match time with us over the preseason, whereas everyone else has played, you know, seven, eight, nine games. But we do have a, a, a highlight here with Robson with the ball, passing it back to Tricker, to Adebayi. Adebayi with a big chip forward, looking for Yeats, can't find him unfortunately, but Andy does manage to bring the ball back down to, to, to Crossdale. Alibiusu goes past the man in the penalty area, takes a shot. Alibiusu with his second of the game. I don't know what he did in that brief time he was back at Arsenal, but this man has gone from what felt like mediocre right back to now who could be star winger for us this season. Easily goes past his man. Maybe he was always a good winger and I was it was my fault for playing him in the wrong place. But 66 minutes on the clock. Let's freshen up the squad. Robson's not having a good game, so I'm going to bring on Kevin Kennedy, who is one of our own. I gave him a couple of appearances in pre-season and he definitely held his own. So I'm trying to give him as much opportunity this season while we're playing a winger formation. And five minutes left to play. Let's see if anybody else needs a rest. Andy is struggling. Alibioso is also struggling. Haven't got anybody else to come on for him. So let's bring Andy off. Bring on McCab, who is going to be at one of our backup defensive midfield options this season. And just going into injury time, Fleetwood have a have a highlight. They had a throw in on the right hand side. Ball goes all the way across the penalty area though to the far side. Alibiosu Alibi there with a brilliant tackle. Yeats is now free through. Can he get his first goal of the season? Chips it past the goalkeeper. This man has had zero pre-season minutes with us this season. Has been away on international duty for the entire summer and in his first game, yes, we're 3-1 three, three, up already, but in his first game shows he has absolutely no ring rust or tiredness. Outstrips both defenders, slotters it past the goalkeeper and is really, really determined to keep Fagan on the bench. But we have a highlight straight away from the kickoff for Fleetwood. Hopefully this is just a nothing highlight or another goal for us. Adebayi with the ball in central midfield goes back to Tricker. Tricker chips it forward out wide looking for Kennedy. Can't find him unfortunately and comes back to Kirk. Kirk hoofs it forward. Taylor Crossdale was through. Can he make it? Five. Oh, he's offside. That's a shame. Maybe five might have been a little bit, uh, a little bit, a little bit of an unfair for Fleetwood for how well of a first half they did have. But Kirk with a brilliant ball forward. Crossdale just straying into an offside position. But as it stands, we are top of League One. Yes, only after one game. But we are we we come out of our first game top of the table. I'm gonna enjoy it while it's here. Stretch, stretched arms. Well done, lads. Fantastic start to the season. And Alabiosu, I saw, had a 6.5 in that game. Why did I not play this man as a winger last season? He was completely wasted as a right back. But hopefully we can find somebody a good enough quality to come in and replace him. Because I don't see Hosanna being my main right back this season. But what a turnaround in mood after the start of this episode. Right, I think the next episode is going to be Oxford away, followed by Saltford at home, just to see if we come up against Adam McDonald. And then the episode after that is probably going to be, I think, Stockport and Wickham. Stockport are expected to be below us in the table in the relegation zones. So that's going to be a key fixture to win if we're going to stay up this season. And Wickham are a team that came up with us last season as well. And so it'll be interesting to see how they've developed over the summer. And by that, that episode as well, we will be three months in and it will very much give us an idea of how the rest of the season is going to play out. Well, we got off to a fantastic start against Fleetwood. But let me know down in the comments, do you think we're going to survive? What do you think I need to do further to, to cement ourselves in League One? But if you did enjoy that video, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel. And as I said at the beginning, don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified of all brand new episodes as we try and survive our first season in League One. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.